Welcome to the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast, episode two. Dexter Henry here with Brian Fonseca. And it's episode two, but we have our very first guest. Uh, if this ever goes down in trivia history, you need to know who the first guest was on the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. It is Robin Lundberg, content creator, uh, host of SI Now with Maggie Gray, host of Stick to Sports, and also does some hosting on air with WFAN. Are you reading that? You, you should know that, all right, offhand. Yeah, you <laughs> it, 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 it just took me out there. I wanted to make sure, the, I wanted to make sure it was right. Like, uh, yeah, so yeah, Robin's yeah. like, no, we're gonna put Dexter out there. I wanted to make sure it was okay. <laughs> Robin also formerly a host on ESPN New York, a great radio personality. Robin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, um, Robin, we're gonna we're gonna jump into it um, with you. A lot of change for you in in your life this year. You transitioned from ESPN. Um, obviously, it's a tough time when they have layoffs at any company. But you seem to bounce back nicely. And what what was that like going from ESPN to, to SI now and all the other stuff you're doing? Uh, yeah, I, I won't say that it didn't suck. What what happened <laughs> at, at ESPN? But um, it was probably the best promotion of my career mm. because of the way it went down. It wasn't like it was just me, right? Right. So, yeah. like, it was this thing. It was like this reality show. You talk about a reality show that people were watching at the time. You know, the news cycle moves so fast now that you forget about that. But that day, right. that was the biggest thing in in the media world, maybe in, in the, you know, country, right? Mm -hmm. So I was sitting there, all right, when do I send my tweet out at the appropriate time, whatever. <laughs> so I tried to just, like, hit the ground running and circumstances um, – you know, came together and shouts to, to the people who, you know who you are, who, who helped me out there. But, you know, I, I wound up, um, you know, it's some of those cliches where it's the best thing that ever happened, you kind of deal. Yeah. It, it really did, I, I think, wind up a good thing because no disrespect to, to what I was doing or anything. I felt a little compartmentalized and now mm. I've got to spread my wings, you know. Did you see it coming at all, like, before it happened? Or did you go in there with the feeling, like, this um, might be it? I knew that the layoffs were coming, um, and I knew my contractual status. Mm. So let's just say, you know, and there are certain conversations that can be had where you're like, okay, that that's not great. Um, I, I yeah. Because <laughs> you, know, right. you, I mean, you seem to just kind of, like... I don't want to say brush it off, but yeah, kind of, because your tweet, you know, you had the whole Jay-Z gif and everything. Well, Jay-Z's my motivational speaker, right? Yeah. So not, Mine too. not because of um, material things, but the aspirational nature of, of the music. So, no, you know, I floss all my off days, right? You know, never, yeah. never, never let them see you down, uh, even, or never let them see you frown, even smile when you're down, right? Mm -hmm. right. So, like, all that sort of stuff is the, the stuff that I tried to use to, to, capitalize myself in that situation and and I know you know like you all you always have your self doubts and your insecurities like here's the paradox of anybody who's speaking into one of these or talking into one of those there's that wrestling of confidence and insecurity right mm -hmm. but I ain't want to lose you know I, I wanted to make sure it wasn't hard to tell you know that I'm that dude. Now we so, like that. <laughs> we like that. That's you know, great. <laughs> so that was that was it. You know. Yeah, I mean, and I think anytime you spend ten plus years at a place, you know, I haven't been in those shoes, but there's gonna be a little bit of question, like, hey, what what happens next? And then beside SI.com, you have the stick to sports. T tell the audience about stick to sports and what you're doing with that there. Yeah, that is um, it's a uh, place called the Video Call Center puts that together, and they get a technology where essentially like kind of around the horn with callers maybe uh, think of it that way where yeah. you know you see on tv a lot of times um shows where somebody's skyping in but they can handle multiple eight at a time callers so um sports talk radio but you're seeing the people right and they're interacting in in that sense and the technology is such that i can control it so i can go to who i want to cut to what shots i want to so um it's a lot to process, but once you get that down, it, that can be invigorating as well. And then, you know, Sports Illustrated has been awesome for me. They, you know, they give me, you know, shouts to, to Maggie and, and everybody over there, you know, and, and some of the stuff I've, I've done over there has been, um, you know, just... It's been great. I, I was on uh, Brian. We both have been on Stick to Sports, and yeah. I know I, I know for myself, I enjoyed it. I thought it was great, and just seeing the diversity and of uh, fans from all across the country calling and in, interacting with you. Um, I disagreed with something you said the time I came on <laughs> That's cool. about Kobe. Um, but oh, is it the Kobe that was overrated? Thing? Yeah, that's Kobe's yeah, yeah. overrated that's thing. Funny. And, that's and, funny. And we're, we're gonna come, we're gonna come back to that. Okay. I'm not letting you off the hook on that here. No, I think one of the cool things I, I got to do it as a viewer one time. But you can you know you can watch the show while you're. 
participating right. in the show at the same time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And but it was fun. I just want to tell people out there, like I enjoyed the experience of coming on personally. I just thought it was cool. Robin handled it. I know Brian felt the same way. Well, Brian's been on like I've a been million on a, times. I've been on a bunch of times. Yeah. I yeah. tend to agree with most of his points too. I mean, like about like the I do too. Thing. I just I just didn't rock with him. I think COVID. there's like a correlation <laughs> between intelligence and agreeing with me. <laughs> oh, so, so what are you trying to say about me with the Kobe thing? I didn't say like <laughs> the correlation's not necessarily everything. So okay, 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 okay. You saved know, yourself. I mean, you're wrong in that case, and I'm right in that case. But you know, like <laughs> getting uh, back, getting back to Sports Illustrated real quick. We, you mentioned like some of your hits. Just you had one, you know, just now about Jamel Hill, the situation going on with ESPN. Um, you know what she said about Mr. Forty Five. We'll call him that. That's, yeah, what, that's what we call him on the show. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm with you there. I don't so, like saying the name. Yeah, so um, tell us about that, like just kind of how that came about and seeing, you know, what it's doing now, but mostly, you know, the significance on you and others coming out in Jamel Hill's defense. Um, you know, we're, we're living in very interesting times, um, you know, because a lot of this stuff, a lot of the old models – and policies of places and the way things were done, I don't think we're, we're equipped for the, the current state of affairs. So mm-hmm. I think with many people, what they're wrestling with is, is a moral dilemma, right? It, it's, do I say something and risk my employment? Do I say something and risk alienating somebody? Um, and at the corporate level, that's tough because we all know how corporations work. I'm not gonna talk about any specific yeah. thing. Right. Um, individually though, you know, you, you deal with that. And being in the sports media world, when that happens and you're surrounded by it, and you know, you feel a certain way. And I was, I mean, the, the video speaks for itself. I was disappointed, mm-hmm. you know, like I, I don't think they had to do anything. Um, and I, I thought they, you know, could have come out and support, as, as I said. And, you know, it, it just, luckily, um, I was able to, to say something about it and, and it registered with a lot of people. And, you know, I, I meant what I said. For those who haven't seen uh, Robin's response to it, you can check it out on SI.com, right? Or you can go to Robin's uh, account. It's, re- it's really blown up a lot of interaction about it. And then you had a tweet right after uh, the whole Jamel Hill thing unfolded. Um, you said standing up for what is right is not wrong. Yeah. Um, which I 100% agree with you yep. on it. And for our listeners who may not know about the situation, Jamel Hill had a tweet uh, basically calling for number 45 a white supremacist which is what he is, and he has associated himself with people like that. Um, tell us more about the tweet and that statement that you said right there about standing up for what is right. You know, the, there's a, a lot of quotes, um, you know, I, I, I've referenced um, in, you know, Maya Angelou has the one, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them mm-hmm. the first. Yeah. You know, so I'm getting my poetry on a little bit with the right <laughs> and wrong play, um, you know, or it's, you know, it's not about left versus right, it's about right versus wrong and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. really, you know, um, the tough thing and, uh, and the dilemma that I was getting at the, in, in a nutshell is you're always told growing up or people wax poetic about, you know, standing up for what's right is hard or you, you, it, it requires to do it despite what the ramifications might be, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of Martin Luther King quotes out there uh, about, uh, you know, the, the, the um, and this is not all a black versus white thing. I think some of these issues go beyond that. But in that specific case, you know, he says, the, the biggest ob- or he said the biggest obstacle was the white moderate who agrees with the cause but not the method, right, or, or won't speak out. So, I mean, that's a bit of a microcosm of some of the other things. So um, that's the dilemma that a lot of people are facing. And, and I think, you know, we see more and more people going, yeah, you know, th- this is the right thing to do. I'm going to – and in that, in that um, – crowd if you start to build it if it starts to snowball if the snowflakes start to snowball Mm -hmm. it's harder to shut them down or it's harder to dismiss or or any of that stuff because it it then becomes well you can't point to this person Mm -hmm. because this person has support from this person who put his arm uh, around him or her we talk about this on the last episode and brian and i've spoken about this off air camera whatever you want to say is there a place for politics and in intersecting with sports? Some people are like, keep the politics out of sports. I don't believe you can. It's impossible right yeah. now. Especially now. Especially you can't now. Do it. Well, right. First of all, some of this stuff is not politics. You know, like, no one's arguing over how the budget should be used or, or you know, like, <laughs> right. trade with China or whatever. You know, like, uh, some of it's not politics. Yeah. It, it's, it's moral. Like, and so right. morals have become politicized. In, in a, a certain way. Um, the other part of it is, like, 
let's say you're as a human being, no one wants to be told to stick to something, right? You don't. You only hear that with like certain professions, mainly like sports broadcasts. Stick to sports. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. it says like, <laughs> "Hey, camera guys, stick to, to apertures." You know, like, um, you know, so you, is that a still a thing? Is that cameras have apertures? Yeah, yeah, cameras yeah. have cameras. Right, well, nobody does. Or school teachers stick to pencils. You know, like right. no, yeah. nobody, <laughs> nobody does that. So like that's insulting. And mm-hmm. then if you're just talking about it from a let me let me even be like I'll be corporate I'll take a step back okay and 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 let me be a producer for a second if you're just talking about it from what merits attention like what are the top stories well if Colin Kaepernick is what everyone is talking about Colin Kaepernick not at this moment but we all know him as a quarterback from the NFL yeah right. that is a sports Topic: The entryway is sports. LeBron James comes out and speaks. LeBron James is the most famous athlete in the United States, at least. When he says something, that is a sports topic. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if, at least I haven't seen, and maybe it's happened, but it's not as if any of these people who are using their platform are coming out and just randomly doing it. You know, it it is... There's a purpose. Yes, there's a purpose, there's a reason, and the the news cycle speaks in that matter. Because if I was running one of these companies, I wouldn't want that either. that isn't what people come to you for, mm-hmm. but it's it's being um, dishonest as a journalist or a programmer if you're going to just ignore that stuff when it happens to be the top story because you know you're you're trying to uh, appease the, the the stick to sports or the, they took our jobs crowd you know yeah because especially now you're seeing more and more people that work in sports are going out and kind of talking about these things I mean we've done it yep. you know what I mean even though it's not something that we probably would have done at this point last year because last year nobody was recognizing Mr. 45 as even a serious candidate and then you know he kind of had like everybody behind him and things like that yeah social issues have been been a, a sports topic for a while now yeah they, they've creeped in um, the, the current um, political situation or, or um, let's say the situation on Capitol Hill that's a whole different animal as, as I said before so yeah you're right I'm like when you say stick, it's, a, it's the title of the show is what I just referenced right stick to sports right I would love it you know like yeah. I like talking about comic superheroes fighting and best rappers yeah. and, and who's the best basketball player like you know like these NBA ranks that came out yeah yeah like, yeah we don't talk I about love that. seeing people angry about that yeah. that's the best <laughs> like what are you mad at dude like, yeah. if we can't argue about ranking players why does sports talk even exist right so like I, I would love to <laughs> But sometimes you just can't. Like it's it's intellectually dishonest, and um, you know you, you feel like a a lack of integrity if, yeah. if you're, you're just like la 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 about the, the the things that are going on. You, you brought up sports rankings and the, the ESPN what top hundred players came out this week and it's been a hot topic. Melo was at 64. CJ McCollum behind was, Lonzo Ball. Behind you Lonzo Ball, which I'm, gonna, which I'm going to say is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But CJ McCollum was sort of in his feelings about this and he's like, "Oh, I know where should, you're going. We should rank sports journalists." Please, I'm like, I'm yeah, all for it. yeah. <laughs> See, I'd be honored if he knew who I was. I know I ain't gonna be on the list. <laughs> I, I, I would, I would, I would I love to see I would that like list. to I would see. I would snub CJ. Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to, and then we could come and talk about it again. We could bring Robin yeah. back on and be like, Robin, how do you feel about yeah. not being on the list? Yeah. Or maybe you would be on the list. I don't, I mean, it depends on whose list. It's true. But if I'm not number one on everybody's list, what's going to happen when I no longer exist, right? Oh, bring it, it yeah. man, is bringing it, bringing it back to the day all the time, man. I like There's it. There's a Jay-Z quote for every situation in life. I happen to believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I happen to, yeah, I happen I to actually so. believe that. My, I live my life by by a lot of that. But I, I like the list. I'm like you. I think I think it creates for great debate. And I'm not even a super big list guy. I know people who are, but I enjoy these conversations. That's sports talk. That's yeah. what it is. Like, I mean, you talk about, like, barbershop arguments and everything. Right. You know, like, so, I mean, I get disagreeing, and, I, and I'm not saying people shouldn't react or shouldn't take their position. Mm-hmm. Just don't take it personally. Like, that's the yeah. stuff that we're, you know, like, yeah. that's the stuff we're supposed to be doing. If you're telling, you know, like, if that's what you're coming to Sports Talk for, especially, like, in, you know, off-seasons and whatnot, what do you want? I mean, that, that's what I don't understand is people who take it so personally. If you're a, if you're a player and you take it personally, I understand, like, putting a chip on your shoulder and, and all that. Right. But, but yeah. as a fan, you say, no, you're wrong, you're an idiot, here's why. Cool. That's, that's, that's and what we, we do, and we but keep it moving, right? Yeah. We, yeah. We, we could, but I some, think, some people go ahead. I think that's the turnoff sometimes when talking sports is that some people take it like so personally, yeah. and then it's like, yo, come on, I don't even want to have this discussion right now. You know what I mean? Like, it's like we weren't, we weren't even trying to go there. We're good. <laughs> we're gonna take a break, uh, hear from our sponsors, and when we come back, we're gonna get into a little uh, NFL and NBA talk. 
stay tuned on Ain't Hard to Tell. What's up, listeners? You know sometimes how it can be hard just to get from point A to point B. Now, when I have to get anywhere and I don't want to deal with the hassle of public transportation, it ain't hard to tell how I get around. I always make sure to use the best car service app in the game. I'm talking about Lyft. Lyft offers rides in minutes. All you have to do is download the Lyft app, request a ride, and you will be on your way quickly. Lyft is all about happy riders and happy drivers. Take a ride with them and you'll see why 9 out of 10 rides end up with a 5-star rating. Lyft always has amazing offers for new customers, and I'm here to tell our listeners about a great offer today. Lyft is currently offering free ride credit to Ain't Hard to Tell listeners. If you are new to Lyft, then you are eligible and getting your credit is easy. All you have to do is download the app and use the promo code AHTTPOD to unlock your free credit today. Ain't hard to tell who is the best car app service. So use the code today and ride out loud with Lyft. All right, welcome back, listeners. We're back on the A Hard to Tell podcast, episode two. We're joined with Robin Lundberg, content creator, is here with us. And we're going to talk a little about the NFL. Now, uh, everybody knows last week we spoke about this. I am not, I hadn't decided. I did not watch week one of the NFL. I, I did not watch any games live, I should say. Mm. I did check out some highlights. Same. I did do reading because I have to be informed as a sports journalist. Same. However, I did not watch. Robin, I know you have to watch for, for what you do. You have to stay informed. But one of the things I saw um, in terms of reading watching the quarterback play seemed to be pretty awful this week I mean you had Scott Tolzien you had Brett Bortles uh, not a lot of good play out there what did you think about week one Robin I mean, you sort of got at it a little bit. One of the reasons people feel compelled to boycott is, is the quarterback play because it's an illustration of everything that's been said about Colin Kaepernick unjustly not having a job, which is just, you know, it, it's past the point of plausible deniability, right, that right. He, he doesn't belong in the NFL. Now, um, the, the NFL itself, it's, a tough, it's, it's in a tough spot right now because mm-hmm. I, I've said for a long time the NFL is the single most popular thing in this country. Right, and and I believe that. Um, at the same time, it's very much in danger. Mm-hmm. Um, not just because of the sport itself having an expiration date due to the, the nature of it, yep. um, but because the league is doing a lot of things to, let's say, take the the milk with the expiration date out of the fridge and get there faster. Yeah. Um, you know, the the NFL news cycle is exhausting. It's exhausting, and they, they need some positive spin at, at some point soon because you, you have Ezekiel Elliott going up against the league, and the, the players in the league clearly are butting heads. You might have another lockout. Mm-hmm. Ezekiel Elliott, I don't know enough about his case, and it makes me a little uncomfortable because it's such a serious matter, but as long as that continues, domestic violence in the NFL are going to be associated in some way, shape, or form yeah. yep. as they've been for a while now. Um, you have the people who were upset about Kaepernick's initial protest and you know I I still boggles my mind how so many people can be upset about the the how and not the why but let's let's acknowledge there is a group there right and they are there the other side the inverse of that who are now saying hey I'm actively organizing and and boycotting so there are a lot of factors not to mention that the TV ratings are going down and arguably the product is worse so uh, fantasy football is probably at this moment their biggest thing that that that's, keeps, that's that keeps people, people in, in. Yeah. Right. because people feel engaged in their fantasy team. When I when I do start them, sit them with people, you know, like you get a lot of interaction, a lot of commentary on that. Yep. Um, so that's one of the things that's keeping the NFL on top. But when when you say something like the NFL could fall, people have a really strong reaction to it because it's been on top and. You know, there were times when boxing and horse racing were on time. You could used to be able to yeah. smoke on a plane. Imagine if you were smoking on a plane right now. So, like, it doesn't mean it will be that way in perpetuity. My, my metaphor is the NFL is King Kong. And for the first mm. time, you see King Kong on top of the building with the planes coming towards him. And you're worried if he's going to or, – or he may fall off. Yeah. We were right. just talking about this in terms of, like, where the NFL is right now. Because right now, yeah, the NFL is still king. However – we know how popular the NBA is, too. And now we're starting to see, like, I feel like we're starting to see a decline in the NFL where it can become something like a niche sport in 10 years. We just saw the CFL. I don't know if you saw this, but the CFL, they're banning, like, contact practices. Yeah. So basically they're acknowledging our sport is too dangerous to practice 
unless we're actually in a game. Yeah. Uh, so how do you feel like that factors in? Oh, I think um, that's the long one. That's yeah. the, you know, it's accelerated. You've he heard a lot more talk about that recently. But for that to really take hold, you're going to have to have people say, okay, I, I have a moral dilemma with watching because of this. And then the talent pool has to dry up and, and maybe an alternative has to emerge. I've talked to a number of NFL players who have said their kids aren't going to play football. And to me, oh, that's right. powerful when they say that. Yeah. Because they've done that their whole life and they make their livelihood that way. Yeah. Like when I say it, okay, so what? Like yeah. my kid's not going to play in the NFL, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's common sense that the NFL is dangerous. You, you watch it. And you can take measures to make it safer, but safety belts make car crashes safer. There's still car crashes. Right. And mm -hmm. I think that is ultimately their biggest problem is the very nature of the sport. When you combine that, when you put that in the blender with the other stuff, it hurts. And, and, and the NBA, I think the NBA will pass um, the NFL. I don't know when. I think it already has as a conversation starter. Yeah, um, I agree with that. The, the NBA has the youngest fan base. It has the biggest fan base on social media. Mm -hmm. And it has an international yeah, I was, was going to argue it's the most diverse fan base, too, probably, right? Oh, yeah, the NBA, absolutely. And I think that's well, something. Basketball and soccer are popular all over the around the world. Yeah. It's not a coincidence, right? Like that, no matter where you are, people like those sports. But let me ask you this, Robin. Do you think that, do you think the NFL, they've been sort of Teflon Don for so long, right? Like, untouchable, feels like they can't be brought down. And I do think it's declining. Do you mm -hmm. think they're still going to hold on? Do you think they'll make changes to, like, the CFL where they have no contact practices? Do you think they'll adopt those things, or they're going to stay rigid to what they, they're doing now? Well, I think uh, they've been forced into a position where they had to do some stuff. Um, you, you worry about their arrogance at times, like the yeah. arrogance of the people in charge. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, you hope, for, for everybody's sake, they're, they're more proactive and, and progressive in, in, in a number of ways. It, it remains to be seen, though. Colin Kaepernick, because you brought him up in the, the quarterback play, do you think he plays this season? Do you think he gets a job? I feel like it's that ship may have sailed already. As long as he doesn't have a job, the story doesn't go away. Um, and that's their real issue, because I think they just thought it would go away, because they're the NFL and they're so big once Sundays. And here's what will happen, I promise you this. Mm -hmm. Because remember, Kaepernick played last year. People forget, like, he played and nobody cared. Yeah. Like it's not like people were super mad. He was on a bad played. team, they that's were, why. But they were super mad when he did the pro. Like, that's that was a real thing, of course. Oh, but, yeah. like, as the season went along, it's not like it was, like, an every week thing. We were following Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. So if Colin Kaepernick gets signed by a team, there will be one day of reaction where people go, oh, Kaepernick was signed by this team. Some fans go, I'm, I hate this team. I'm never watching them again. And then we'll move on to the next thing. Yeah. But as long as he remains unsigned, it is a story. It's going to linger. So that, that's what they're facing. And I, I wonder if they eventually realize that. And mm -hmm. maybe instead of the behind the door, um, closed doors conversations that are like, I don't want this guy on my team, mm -hmm. some behind closed doors conversations start going on where somebody's like, or, you know, Goodell, somebody's like, you know, take one for the team and, and, and bring him. And, you know, on, on merit, he deserves to be on the team. Wouldn't shock me because the NFL is all about the bottom line when it comes to money. We we know we know that, so yeah. they're not going to mess that up. Moving on to a little NBA, and we're oh. going to go to this Kobe topic <laughs> that I disagree with Mr. Yeah. Lundberg on. I might let you guys fight here. Uh, Kobe, you said is I, I don't want to put you know what I do not want to put the words in your mouth. Please state what you said about Kobe that got everybody, not me and Al, yeah. other people in our age about. Well, I mean, look, the headline removes the nuance from the conversation. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I. I I'm comfortable saying it could be said that Kobe is one of the most overrated players ever. And that's from this context. Kobe Bryant, I think, is inarguably a top 20 player, um, maybe top 15, maybe, and I could see arguing for him like right around the outside of the top 10. Dexter's face is but about a burst. There are some people who put him like top five or, or there. And when you're doing that, when a number of people are doing that, that's when I think. Kobe Bryant is overrated because I, I don't think he has any business in a top five, um, and I would have him somewhere between ten and twenty. Somewhere between ten and twenty. Which makes him one of the best basketball players yeah, who ever that's lived. Not, that's not like, outrageous. Like I, but but you know how it is. Mm -hmm. It's like people. If you don't like somebody, then you hate them. I, oh, I don't think Robin's a hater. No, I'm no, no, not, no, not I, for you. I, yeah, but, but I'm saying because we, we, we know about that. Kobe's fan base. Yes, and I'm your very familiar with Kobe's fan base, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, and after that the tape ones... came out, like, you know, <laughs> funny, <laughs> one of the funny things when you're on Twitter and you get a, a, you ever get a DM request 
and like a DM <laughs> request you can see, and it's like, do you accept or decline the request? It's yeah, kill yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> well, do I want to accept this one? Uh, <laughs> from 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 Kobe fan yeah, underscore twenty four eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like really you're going. I, I, look, I I will be you know full disclosure. I I am Kobe Bryant fan. Yeah. Um, I think Kobe Bryant's one of the best players I've ever watched. Um, I don't think he's as low as you have him in ten to twenty. I'd be intrigued to hear your top ten, which I did not hear. That because I don't think it's unfair for me to say, hey, Robin. You're wrong. I completely disagree with you. I don't even know what your top ten is. I don't know who you've got. All you. right. Well, let me tell you that I, I, there's not a. I don't know if I have a stock top ten. And the tough thing about doing it is separating big men from yeah, yeah. I, uh, like uh, Will from, and Shaq. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the three best players I think I ever watched, or most dominant players, uh, in order of appearance, were Jordan, Shaq, and LeBron. But mm. um, with Kobe, the reason that take happened was Jordan had said that he would take Kobe over LeBron, which I think he says for yes. a number of reasons. One, <laughs> obviously Kobe patterned his game after, after Michael, Michael Jordan. Yeah. He's the closest facsimile the remix. of Michael Jordan that we've ever seen. Like He's as close to being Michael Jordan without being Michael Jordan as you can possibly get. Mm. Um, I wouldn't disagree with that. I also think Jordan knows that Kobe isn't really a threat to him and his mm -hmm. legacy, yeah. and LeBron is. So I think by propping Kobe up, he is therefore devaluing LeBron. So the, the reason that the one that, that went out there was mm -hmm. said on the day that it was, it really happened again, we were having a conversation in the newsroom, is because with that, you're putting Kobe on the level of Jordan and LeBron. And I don't think Kobe belongs on that level. I think he belongs in the next tier of guys. Is there anybody mm -hmm. else that's on that level with, in your mind with LeBron and, and Jordan? Jordan? Yeah. Uh, or, is, or are they in a class by I themselves? I mean, so I have to give respect to the people that came before, who I, you know, I, I can't speak with authority on Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell right. and those guys, you know, from back in the day. Um, Magic and Bird obviously revitalized the NBA, but I think LeBron's the best player ever. Thinking Michael Jordan's the best player ever is one of the more reasonable things you can think. Um, I do think, yeah, it's for people of my age group and around that, it's LeBron and Jordan 1A and 1B, one way or the other. I think it's a lot, and that's why that topic has been so heavy yeah. the past year or so. So staying on the NBA, what do you think happens with Carmelo Anthony? You've been you know, covering the Knicks for a while. You've gone head-to-head -head with a lot of Knicks fans. Well, head-to-head, -head, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know. So what do you think happens there? Do you feel like he finally gets traded at some point, or at this point he's just going to stay there? It's crazy because it, it felt inevitable, and like here we are. Yeah. I mean, the NBA season was to start tomorrow. I mean, like, <laughs> it's like right here. <laughs> Media like, day is like next yeah. week. They don't even have an offseason yeah. anymore. Um, I mean, he's starting the season with the Knicks, it looks like. I can't imagine he'll be there at the end of the year. I hope he winds up in Houston. I think mm. Houston is you the best. You think that would be fun to watch? Yeah, I mean, they have to get past the Dan Tony Mello thing because that was a real thing. Yeah, um, yes. But as far as fit, I think that makes the most sense because Carmelo can't play the three anymore. He's too slow on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. But he, he's big and strong. He can guard fours, and he can still be a mismatch at the four. They could really slot him right into that spot. So if you started Capella, mm -hmm. Mello, Ariza, Harden, and Paul, do you think with the guys that they have there, that's a squad. So do you that think they can come off the bench. That's not bad at all. Do you think they could get him with without giving up a reason? Uh, like maybe package like Ryan Anderson and whoever else. I, I, yeah, I think they have all the leverage. I mean, I, I don't think. Um, you think the Knicks would take a deal with Ryan Anderson? Ryan, well, I think that's probably been the the, the hang up. If maybe he could get moved to a third. I don't know the exact. I think the Rockets can get him without giving up at least, you know, if it, if it is a reason, somebody else in the roster feels us, I, I, I don't know if it'll be a reason, I doubt it, but they can get him without sacrificing mm -hmm. their core. Let me mm -hmm. put it that way. Nick Van Dexter, what do you think? Well, I mean, uh, the Nick fan in me says that Mel it's Mello, it's time to go. The Knicks are not winning <laughs> with Mello. I'm looking from a Knicks standpoint. The Knicks are not winning Mello. The point that you raise, Robin, is they don't have the Knicks don't have any leverage here because Carmelo holds all the cards with the no, no trade, trade clause, yeah. and you know he wants to go to the Rockets. We know he doesn't want to go anyplace else. I think it really comes down: can the Rockets find a third team that can maybe sweeten in the deal and maybe be willing to get something? I don't know which will come back from the Knicks, and would they be willing to give the Knicks a first-round pick back in this deal because they're not getting it from the Rockets because the Rockets can't trade first-round picks in consecutive years here. I think this is the move the Knicks have to make. I think both teams are going to hold out. I think you'll see a deal 
maybe somewhere around the All-Star. I mean, mm. maybe late first they could get. Um, here's the thing. Yeah, they're not getting a lottery pick. No. 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 It, well, it doesn't matter. hurt the Knicks to be bad this year. I mean, they should be bad. Yeah, they should be bad. That's what that's what, that's what they put the young players. Nick fan Dex is rooting for. Put the young players, you know, around Porzingis, see what you can grow. I actually didn't hate the Tim Hardaway Jr. signing. Really? But, at yeah. that price? Uh, look, everybody makes that much money. I mean, who, who doesn't make that much money? <laughs> well, it's, well, I mean, like, you know, it's the money, though, Rob. Well, yeah, but money. you look at Alan Crabb, who just went to Brooklyn. The same, same money, basically. Yeah. And Hardaway Jr. got buckets at the end of the year. I don't think he's a great all-around player, but he's really good at that. He's young. How else were the Knicks going to acquire a 24-year-old who could do what he does other than signing them with money? They had to do it that way. Yeah. And they had to put the money out there so Atlanta didn't match. So, like, I don't defend many Knicks moves because I disagree with many of them. I, right. I was sort of on an island on that one. Um, as far as Carmelo goes, what is better, 30 cents on the dollar or zero cents on the dollar? Mm. Agreed with you. you. You don't want to hold on to a declining asset. That's yeah. just bad business. Like, yeah. simply, it's just yeah. bad business. Yeah. You don't want to do that. So I'm with you. The Knicks, they're, kind, they're not in the best position to sell him, but you kind of have to take what you can get. Um, before we get before we get to break, there's been a crazy offseason. We talked about all the drama in this offseason. Are you liking that with the NBA? I feel like it kind of extends the season. The offseason is so much drama in the offseason. Kyrie. It's now amazing. You got, you got Kevin Durant with the sneakers coming out and he's hating on everybody. <laughs> you're, you're liking this. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, again, it's sports talk. Like, that's what it's – how many times – all right. What do you do – Let's call, we, uh, I call them hoopotheticals, right? You, you do that with basketball so often. Uh, who would you trade for this person? Who fits better? Yeah. Like, it, hap- it happens. Yeah, like, yeah. So all that stuff is happening. Player movement. They, and the NBA has the, the most recognizable players in, in all the sports Agreed. even now. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. So, like, the random dude, like, like Tim Hardaway Jr. or Alan Crabb is a conversation starter because people know who that person is when they might not know who their counterpart in baseball or football is. And player movement is exciting. People like it. Um, and... Yes, it's been huge for the NBA. I mean, it's to the point where you could – I don't even know if it's an argument. The offseason definitely generates more attention than the regular season. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, no doubt about That's it. That's an advantage for the league, though, when pairing up against, like, the NFL and everything well, else. I mean, they have by at, far the best offseason. I just said their, their, their season's about to start. So um, the NBA now goes from October through August. Yeah. Really, September is the only month. Yeah. Where nothing's happened. And now everything's yeah. about to get started. And even then, I was just, I was into this Euro basket. I was watching yeah. a lot of that. We, oh, yeah. So, ba- like, basketball never stops. And you, you got to like that. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk with Robin Lumberg, who is a huge Jay-Z fan, like myself. So, we'll talk about him. You've seen him drop a lot of quotes and lyrics throughout this episode already. So, we come back. We'll talk a little Jay-Z and hip-hop with Robin Lumberg on Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. Sports Guru is the place where fans talk about sports via video. All videos are 60 seconds or shorter. Sports Guru makes the video look more professional and fun by adding automated on-screen graphics. You can follow your favorite sports by team, trending, new, or by people you follow, and more. Type in the title of your video and it will automatically, that's right, auto magically go into your on-screen graphics. It's just that simple. Tag your teams and publish sports. Let's talk sports. The best new sports web series is here. It's from Backpack Broadcasting, and it's called The Sports Walk. The Sports Walk is a series where diverse sports fans take a walk and share their views at the intersection of sports and society. The entire first season is now available on Backpack Broadcasting's YouTube channel and BackpackBroadcasting.com. See what other sports fans have to say about a variety of issues in the world of sports. Watch all 13 episodes from season one and take the sports walk today. Back to the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. We are joined by our first guest ever, Robin Lundberg. You can see him on SINow.com. You also can hear him on WFAN. Uh, he'll be on uh, this coming weekend. Uh, and you can watch his show, online show, Stick to Sports. That's where you can watch Robin. Now, Robin, as we mentioned before at the end of the last segment, is a huge Jay-Z fan, like myself. Robin, you think he's the greatest of all time. Why? I mean, that's like obvious uh that's it's like a, the sky's blue yeah i mean like come on that's like can say can you say another you can say somebody else is your favorite but i don't really know how you argue anybody else is the goat other than hope at this point when you factor in quality catalog skill influence longevity you know all those things factored in I mean, who else are you gonna say 
people make. Who else but me? The only other rational <laughs> one. <laughs> you gotta give us some bars there. You gotta some bars. The only other rational one people like myself, for example, would say is Nas, and I feel like that's the only one that. No, no, no. Listen, that's the only one it's where you can be like, no. hey, that's it. I don't. Even that's think the only person. No, no, Nas. If you're Nas, factoring you could, everything you could, that. If you're, if he's your guy, you could argue he's the best. You could argue he's. You could say he's your. I favorite. definitely do you that. You can't argue he's the greatest. The other guy is in the greatest conversation. Nas isn't even in there. Nas is uh like the greatest conversation after Jay. Why is that? Because I feel like you're being dismissive. Because Nas didn't impact the world in that way. Uh, like, you know, Biggie and Pac, their runs were too short, but they had an impact on culture. Eminem. Eminem is another guy I would put in that that mix. I don't like. Much of what Eminem has put out in recent years, yeah. but you can't deny how nice that dude was yeah. and how huge that dude was. That's like, kind of so, our dilemma with Eminem. So, what the about half the, and uh, people probably listen to this like, well, you have a podcast that takes for, for, for Nas song, "Ain't Hard to Tell," one of my favorite songs. With great song. Nas's Ill- slugging Illmatic. percentage, by the way, is incredible. Like his, his great a, songs are so great. Illmatic's a great album mm-hmm. that had a ton of impact on the hip hop community. I know for it, for me personally, I would say that is my favorite hip hop album. Okay. It yeah. is. It's that, my favorite. It might be album. the Family Feud answer for best hip hop album. But mm-hmm. when, when does the next I, Nas album come on that list? Like for the for the the general right. it, for it, the culture it, for the in, zeitgeist. In the terms of, of great mm. hip hop albums that we're talking about, I agree. And yeah. this is why to that I always say to people, hey, Illmatic's my favorite hip hop album. Jay Z's my favorite hip hop artist because yeah. I'm with you. I think Jay Z has a stronger catalog. Get your overall. songs out. Let, or get your fact, CDs out. Let's go song for song. Ill is doing it till you prove me wrong. I agree. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think that I think <laughs> it's Jay's catalog is just is is Jay's catalog stronger. is like the Beatles. Or the, you know the Rolling Stones. For that, rap, that, I agree. For, for I period, agree. that's that's the level Jay Z is on. I agree. With you know, you. like that. That's where he's at. Nas is like um, in that. If I'm extending that, Nas is Standard like metaphor here. <laughs> you you did this recently. You had the Fleetwood rap. Mac. You had the rap equivalents. <laughs> You had the rap equivalents <laughs> yeah. for like for like hip hop artists, right? Yeah. Didn't you do that recently? Oh, I did the NBA um, yeah, yeah, yeah. baller rapper. I forgot who you who had. Who you have for Jay Z? Uh, Jordan. Jordan, yeah. Okay. Because the entryway to the conversation, Jay Z always refers to him as Jordan. Yeah. Uh, or himself as Jordan, right? For so, Nas, then you have what was it? Was it Tim Duncan? Yes. That's what it was. Yeah, uh, an all-time great, like sort of like quietly. Going about their oh, business. I can see that. I, yeah. Sometimes I, get, I hate analogies. Sometimes I think people mess them up. Yeah. That, I, I, no, I think they, they do a hard job, yeah. horrible job. I'm like, that doesn't even work. But yeah. I, actually, I actually like that. That's it. I, didn't, I missed that. So yeah, I that's one that. of the SI videos. Just start, um, yeah. Some rapper, bowler parallels or something. You'll be able okay, to Okay, I got to check it out. That, yeah. Look at Robin plugging his own work there. That's how you're supposed to do it. Going back, going back to Jay-Z real quick. Did you see Vulture's top... 274. Yeah. Robin is shaking off, his head. Off like air? Him. Hold on. Off air. Let me tell you what happened. So Dexter came up to me. He's like, did you see this list? I was like, no. What are you talking about? He's like, did you see this Vultures list? Yeah. 274 Daisy songs is yeah. horrible. That list was trash. And I was there looking. You know, that's the word I use. I was, trash. I was I looking at it. I read it from the bottom. I was like, all right, whatever. Once I got to here, where number one is Hard Knock Life. Yeah. Number two was Can I Live. Number three was Big Pimpin', which you asked me, you asked me to guess which one was number one. I, I said Big Pimpin'. said Big Pimpin'. Because I knew they were going to do something well, like, I mean, you I'm know. Gonna, I'm going to hear your thoughts on this, but here's what I'll say. When I took, read the list, I saw that the last, the worst song was Anything off of Kingdom Come, which I actually do think is the worst song Jay-Z's ever made. Uh, it's right there with um, I Know What Girls Like. Those yes. would be my bottom. They're, they're, that was also I, toward I'm the bottom. You. I'm with you on that. Yeah. So, but the rest of the list, when you didn't have songs in the top 20 that were off his classic regarded albums were never change what, harder to what they right tried now. to do on that list yeah. is they tried to take like the personal stuff and make it the best stuff like that song he did for his daughter blue ivy right after she was born that song sucks yeah. and <laughs> I agree. they put that in like the top 50 or something like that's not a good like, song come on, i mean like it's nice he did it for his daughter and everything but not just because song. it's for his daughter <clears throat> no come on you know like it, Jay's got too many bangers, too many great songs of, of you know, he's also, you know, we're talking about the greatest, versatile. Like, you can have every kind of song from Jay-Z. Yeah. You can have the, the, the joint that um, gets you in your, your feelings. Like right? a song cry. Yeah, you can have the joint that, that gets the crowd going crazy, like You Don't Know, you don't know. or PSA. PSA. Mm-hmm. You can have the joint that gets the clubs, like, you know, Jigga What, or, Jigga you know, what, right. yeah, yeah, any of that, all the timbo, dirt off your shoulders. You know, like, the, the rock crossover joints, like 99 yep. Problems, 
the stuff with, you know, the numb encore, yeah. everything, like every kind of, of thing he, you can touch. But I, I think that's what they tried to do on that list was when he was being, um, they tried to be like, oh, 444 four, four, four is his most personal album. So the, um, <laughs> I like the, voice. the personal tracks, <laughs> they're really the most significant and they overrated. That's how they did it in the meeting when they were talking. They had that, yeah, they like, had that voice. Like, we're going to put Hard Knock I Life here. A bunch of songs like that. I think they, they overrated. I don't mind like some of the big, iconic, popular songs being near the top. Right. I mean, like, look, the public sometimes decides, like, you ain't, you. You're only being like a jerk if you put <laughs> Empire State of Mind number 300. It was right? four right here yeah. on this list. But I mean, that's his, big, his biggest hits yes. are Empire State of Mind, Hard Knock Life, that Hard Knock would be Life. There, PSA, I there. think now, which they should make the national anthem. And oh, that'd be great. I signed for uh, that. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, like, but those are like those are like his biggest songs. So like, yeah, they have to be big, big pimp is another. One. They have to be represented. So yeah. I don't mind them being high. It's not those ones that bothered me as much mm-hmm. as these like random ones that didn't have any business being mentioned. I, I'm in agreement with you on that. So I'm gonna throw a question at you that um, oh, so my fiance I showed her this list and she was like. She understood. She's not a big Jay fan like me, but she's yeah. like, well, what's your favorite Jay song? And I was like, oh, man, I don't even know if I can answer that. See, I had to That's where I was going to go I next, like, too. I was like, yo, I don't even know if I can answer that, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Yeah. Um, what's, your, what's, your, what's your favorite Jay song? Song Cry. No. <laughs> um, That's a guess. <laughs> you Don't Know okay. might be the answer. Oh, you so open I the show with that. I usually radio yeah, show yeah, open, so, so it's an easy answer. It. The other ones that are in consideration are uh, Heart of the City. Mm. Great song. PSA. Feeling it. Oh, um, uh, one of the most underrated J songs. This I think life there is. forever. The evils. Uh, the evils is great, but not on my. Not, like I'm working my way, like maybe ten. Mm. I really, really, really like. You know, off the, it's gonna take more time with the new one, but I really love Smile, Marcy, Me, and Caught mm. Their Eyes. Um, what other records am I? My missing? first song. My, Dirt off your shoulder. You got to get one of the Timberland. With dirt off your shoulder is great. Come on, it's a great vibe. His face. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> yeah, nah. so that, those are. I, I might be missing something or, or not mentioning something, but those are those are the ones. With I'm, I'm gonna get to the new J album, but with this the landscape of hip hop today, are, are you listening to any any newer rappers today? Because you know, people in our age range, we kind of grew up in the golden era of the '90s. They sometimes like, oh, you guys are old now. You're not listening to new hip hop. Who are you listening to now that's current? If you if you want to say, I mean, do they? I, I like Kendrick. I like yeah. I like ASAP uh, mm-hmm. like uh, Rocky. Uh-huh. You follow Vince Staples on Twitter. Do you listen to him? I, I think Vince Staples is really talented. I haven't liked some of his. Re- I didn't like his last album. Really? Uh, yeah, I liked the the one. Um, that really it? that really hurt Brian. The double album. You should know. It really hurt. <laughs> the, uh, what was the double album? No, but I understand why people like Big Fish Theory. Why people don't, you know. Uh, Do you like Freddie Gibbs? <laughs> That's the question that had to be asked here. I, I'm, Do you know who Freddie Gibbs? Yes, is? I know okay. who he is, and I've heard a few songs. Don't disrespect that. I'm not um, informed enough to speak on him. Fair enough. Uh, I like. Um, I? I mean, I like. J- I don't love J. Cole, but I like J. Cole. Okay. Um, who else? Am I missing anybody? Like those, but those are the, those are the guys. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm a big Kendrick J. Cole guy, um, so I, I tend to like it. So I like him too. But we, yeah. he's not a big Jay Z fan as uh, as we got. He's in my say. he's in my top five favorites. Yeah, he I better be. I think he yeah. is. At least. Or else we'd have to like get you out of here right now. Um, <laughs> four four four. Uh, I like the album. It's my favorite hip hop album that came out this year. I really liked it. Um, it was kind of the album I guess I wanted from Jay for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very personal. What what did you what did you think about it? Uh, how are you feeling about the album? What's your reaction to it? And how's it sitting with you now? I I try to play other things, and I wind up going back to it. Ah. Uh, and and I usually it the way it's constructed, I usually play it straight through. Like, yeah. um, if I was you know you know what might be my least favorite song in there, 444. And you know that Vulture had it number five. Yeah, I remember the personal ones. That they, that's that might be my least favorite song on it. Interesting. Really? Uh, that or Legacy, probably. Um, yeah, but I love Legacy. Man. I like. I mean, Legacy's a nice outro. The but there are like, um, OJ, Smile. Yeah. Caught their eyes. Which is my least favorite. Smile, Smile food, is my favorite. Bam, and Marcy Me. That's six like all timers for me, and that album like right like right now it's my favorite album. Mm-hmm. I don't know where it'll wind up. The blueprint is my answer for favorite album ever, uh-huh. but I feel right now about this album the way college me felt about the blueprint. Like I can't imagine a rap album or an album period being better for me at this point in my life. Thirty six year old, you know, 
washed two kids <laughs> all that stuff like I, I i i can't imagine the album being better for, for where i'm at right now i, I love it I, I think it i think it'll go down as a classic i think it it moved the sort of culture mm. in okay. a way yeah. where people were like on no you know there's a disconnect we um, <laughs> we don't got that money over here like that yeah. line had people reacting people were talking and there's syllabus somebody put together on it and the, <laughs> that's the other thing i i think um a couple things I appreciate about the way it's done. Um, mm -hmm. I love, you know, some people might, because it's not trap beats and all that, the, the, the way the Thank samples God. are chopped. Thank yeah, I was going to say the same I, thing. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Like, I, I beautiful agree. job doing, chopping those samples. And the density of the content, like, yo, he was going in. And th there's, you know, you have to take a long time to unpack lyrically what he's doing. Mm. And even just as like a rapper, if you want to go rap stand for a second, Smile and Marcy Me both can go up against anything anybody ever put out as a rapper. Like the third verse of Smile and the whole thing of Marcy Me, like that is rapping as good as anyone has ever rapped. I would agree on both of those. He killed it in Marcy Me. I do, yeah. I do hope that, you know, more albums, we get more albums like that where we have one producer working with the artist the entire way, which is why I told you I like Pinata so much. Which is why this I told is you. This Freddie Gibbs like <laughs> this, this, this happens like every episode. That's what Freddie Gibbs every, all We're two of them. By New Year's all two of them. Gibbs, yeah. Right? But, but no, I do hope that that's a trend that continues because No ID is one of my favorite producers. He actually was instrumental in Summertime 06, Vince Staples album. That yeah, got I like a that lot of, a lot. A lot of critical yeah. acclaim. He worked with him extensively on that album. Um, he did a lot of things on Nas's Life is Good album, which I love, that came out five years ago. So to see them work together on this album, I love the way he was flipping the samples and things like that. And I agree with you on Smile. For me, that's one of the best verses of the year, the third verse. Yeah, he killed it. It was I, great. I, I killed it. That was when I heard that, that and that, that was the verse. Like, that was the verse where I heard it on the album. I kept replaying it. Yeah. I was like, damn. Dude, you just My therapist said a relapse. said, perhaps uh, Freudian slipped, slipped in European, European whips. whips. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, guys. I'm telling you, Robin Lumber, he's got bars, man. What about, what about, I think, what I think he's got bars. What about Kill Jay-Z? You didn't mention it. I like I love it as an intro I think it's very track. well executed. It's a great intro to the album as a standalone. Yeah. It doesn't go, like I said, the, the six I named. Bam, and Bam's gonna set it off in concert. It's gonna be yeah. That's what you said when it came out. You're, well, you're, you're actually I'm gonna, going to Meadows tomorrow. Right. So I don't know when this is going out, but you know, like Friday. That means later tonight, September 15th. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to, to Meadows. Uh, he opened uh, Made in America with Bam. Family Feud. Yeah. Uh, like I said, Marcy Me is just awesome. Smiles, uh, I love. And um, uh, what else? Uh, OJ, of course, speaks for itself. Yeah. But Sleeper has caught their eyes. I don't think people realize how dope that song is. The the vibe on the beat is is crazy. The, that's one of the illest sample chops I've ever heard in my life. Mm. And then the content of that song is ill. Like all of the um, references to, to reading people. You yep. know, like, so the beat doesn't exactly match what he's saying. So it's a little bit of a juxtaposition. And I, I think that's a Sleeper song that I think could also do really well on radio or something like it's that be, if, they, if they push it out. It's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. I mean, I, I, the, the young heads are not going to agree with this, but, you know, what, what do you call it? You said we're washed? We're, yeah. we're washed? Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm going to call myself that, yeah, but... I'm not there yet. Say it effect. <laughs> it's okay. Wait, I just had a thought. So the whole thing with Kanye, the Kanye factor, yeah, yeah. he's got an album that's going to come out, I guess, soon that he's been working on. Do you anticipate a response? Are you hoping for a response? What do you, Are you hoping to get... I think at get, this point, we might be more likely to get a J-verse on the Kanye album. Mm. Uh, okay. they, TMZ put the thing out that Kanye reached out to him over the weekend or something. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they'll... Look, I, I'll de defend Kanye's music forever. Um, Kanye the dude... Kanye's music. ...has gotten harder and harder <laughs> to defend, right? Um, especially in the last 12, 18 months, whatever it's been. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't, you know, like, Kanye had all that coming. So I don't know if you can ever go back to that relationship where they work on an album together or whatever. Mm -hmm. But given that they have history and, and a friendship and, and, you know, a working professional relationship, I don't think this is something that's going to go on forever. It's more like a little spat. It's not like it was venomous, what Jay said. It, you know, he was, he was um, giving him a, a bit of a, a talking to. Yeah. Um, and... I, I think if they reconcile beforehand, maybe Kanye will say something. But Kanye put out Big Brother is a diss track. You know, like people mm. think of it as like an homage track. That's a diss track. <laughs> you actually listen to that song. Um, so he, I, he let out his feelings. About I think I think yeah. what we could get is the next Kanye release. 
you get a J um, feature. And what I would love is if he started with, what's up with you and Jay, man? Are y'all okay, man? I got it from here, yay, <laughs> damn. That would be perfect. And then he goes in. Yeah. That would be nice. All right, yeah. let's, let's bring it back full circle as you wrap things up. Uh, obviously, a lot's been going on with you since uh, you left ESPN, uh, on to big things. What's, what's next for Robin Lumberg? You got to stick to sports. You got SI now. You're on the fan. You, you got 50 million jobs like me. I think you might be like part West Indian. That might be in you a little bit. But... Uh, What's, what's next? What's next for Robin Lumber? Beef patties. Um, <laughs> that's all. Is that's that okay? Was that offensive? Here. Take that out. No, no, that no, no. That's uh, always welcome. Uh, here. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm figuring it out. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with a lot of what I've done. I'm proud of myself in, mm. in some ways for for some of the stuff I've done um, of late uh, and the way I've responded to some things and. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I can't give you that definitive answer because I wasn't, this was not like the last few months of my life or however, were not part of the plan. Right. Um, and so I, I'm, I made the best of that situation. I, I think I've elevated myself mm. and I'm going to um, keep running. Well, you got to keep running. I think yeah. I speak for myself and yeah. Brian in that, you know, we're, we're proud to see you doing what you do um, as content creators. we always proud to see other people doing that, and we just got to keep supporting each other and elevating, right? Yeah. That's exactly. Yeah. Constant elevation causes expansion. Yeah. And you got to have the Jay-Z. That's I, a rock him line. Yeah. That Jay-Z quoted. Though. Quoted, So yes. and I, <laughs> somehow I, you know, was quoting Jay-Z. Jay-Z. Yeah. And as Jay-Z. Rock him, by the way, it, he deserves mention um, as one of the all-time greats. Absolutely. Yes. For flipping the style. Like, before Rock Him, no, just, I love a lot of Run DMC songs and a lot of BC Boy songs, but the rapping style back then was, you know, more one, two, buckle these my shoe. Are the yeah. I, I, yeah. Rock Him and Big Daddy Kane. Texas, these are the breaks, and them, man. Those, those dudes and Cool G Rap, them, those are the guys who, like, brought modern day flow, or at least what washed yeah. New Yorkers think of as modern day flow <laughs> in, into the, into, you know, popular culture. Yeah, well, we know you're going to continue to do great things. As Jay Z says, you will not lose. We will not lose. We'll keep it. Robin? Ever. Thank you for joining us. Thanks yep, for having me. Our Talk first guest. Our first guest. That is Robin Lundberg. Uh, once again, you can see him on SI.com. Uh, He's on the SI Now show with Maggie Gray. Catch him on WFAN. Mm-hmm. And also check out his show, Stick to Sports. That's a wrap for episode two of It Ain't Hard to Tell. Robin Lundberg was our guest. We'll see what we have in store next week. Thank you for listening, guys.